All right, let's get into it. Karachi Hardpoint, map one. This is obviously our map pick. Definitely uh, the, you know, Hardpoint that we were really feeling strong against, uh, you know, New York, and that's why we picked a map one. They vetoed, I believe, six star, uh, and that was, you know, another comfortable map for us, so we get the Karachi map one. We start bad side, quote unquote, P3 side. And we get a initial pre-nade. That's a, that's a big pre-nade with Brandon. Again, we were talking about the, the control pre-nade uh, a while ago that he hit, you know, towards mid on one of the, one of the controls. And he actually hits it here to, to win the break off. And this is, this is a huge break off win because you're not really expected to win the break off on this side. So obviously we win the break off. We have Ant Sogan Hill, AG holding left side. Brandon holding uh, mid from top three. Just an easy, clean setup. That's basically all you need to do. As long as you're holding the left side like AG is here, he gets a two-piece. These guys don't even need to worry about their left. So this is a big thing, especially, you know, in, in control, in hard point. You get someone, you know, up here or you get someone pushed out on the street somewhere, making sure if they try and take this route, you completely have them. Or if they try and go top fountain, you have them too. So you just need to make sure that you're watching these different lanes, you know? Still soaking. So, honestly, really, really good soakage. They're already starting to, again, rotate towards this P2, getting this ticket control, getting top fire control, and, and, you know, making their way to diner. Big pick by Brandon towards top fire. We're already making waves ourselves to try and take routes for new. Obviously, number one over here. Number three is already taking a deeper route, too. We're still soaking old time. Ant dies off old. Kiz actually gets a huge two-piece. If Brandon wins that, that's massive for us. Kiz gets a two-piece, though. They're actually spawning deeper now. We're going to spawn here, you know, back alley. And Ken is big now. Ken and AG are so massive because we know that there's going to be people towards new, most likely. So we need to, to work together to to break this. Brandon tries to get Paco off this heady. Unfortunately, he doesn't. Still, you know, even though you're spawning back alley, you have, you know, these areas to work with. It's just so easy for someone to kill you, you know, jumping off this hot, this hot fall. Big kill by Ken because what he wants to do here is he's staying alive ticket because we know we, we've talked about how big of, you know, tick and control is. He he's holding this progression for us so that, you know, they can't, you know, themselves have ticket and to, to, to work with. So as long as he's ticket, he's buying a little bit of time and, and, you know, distraction for the rest of these guys coming off spawn, you know, through long or through short or through top fire, wherever they're going to be coming from. So ticket control, making sure not only that we have it, but that they on the other team don't have it. He sees an opening, he hits the hill, realizes this guy's is the one on point, and he's going to be in the, inside this side room, kills him for it. As it's going down, it buys uh, space for AG to make some moves front side, and it buys some time for Brandon to get off of this half wall. I keep saying half wall. Hop wall, half wall, whatever you want to call it. Gets the kill on Hydra this time. You know, AG, he's on the flank here too now, on this last guy on hill. We break it, 40 seconds left, huge break. But again, they, they're still spawning close. Look how close they're spawning. They have reinforcements close. So it's big. If Brandon can get any sort of kills or damage here to open things up while Ken is, is trying to reinforce from top plat, that's huge. Ken gets one. Brandon gets one but dies. So they end up winning that trade battle, which is unfortunate. But we, we at least made it some, somewhat mixy for a breaking scenario. And we're still banging this old, which is, which is big for us because, again... Since we're banging this old, we're going to have a one-on-one -on -one over here. We could win this scrap time here. They're going to win new because they're already, you know, spawning for it. So we're, we're on the back foot there anyway. So if we can win this one-on-one -on -one and, and just get this scrap time, that's, that's the best we can do. Fortunately, Paco gets the kill, though. Still going to hit it, though, because, again, we want to make sure that he's not on scrap time off of old. Because let's say, let's say all th four of our guys just hit around this way. Now Paco has free reign to 
take a route through fountain, take the route through mid. He knows that we weren't hitting through this right side, so he can just tell the rest of his team based on the pressure, okay, no one is coming this right side. Literally just look your left. And that, from that, it's so easy to work off of. So you kind of have to hit hold in this scenario. But Paco's just frying, so... We hit old. Unfortunately, we don't teamwork him well enough, and now we're just in the same uh, like position regardless. So, you need to hit, hit old so that doesn't happen. But you got to play the the two v one, you know, better. So regardless, they get a free you know rotation win because we were just dying, trying to break that old anyways. Now we're in a full break scenario, one middle. You know, Ken was working this left side, but he's he's going to go top uh, bed instead of low. We have two guys at the right side. I think we're still looking. I think AG's still looking for someone possibly. Who's he looking for? He might be looking for a spawner or something, but the spawner's going to, gonna, you know, spawn close. I guess he thinks that this guy might have spawned a little bit deeper. Regardless, Ken's going to be trying to, you know, flank towards this useless side. Number six looking at it. Good play by number six. Ace looking mid. Seven's actually helping him out mid, and number five can call out in case anyone jumps uh, out of top three or comes through coop side. Ken, huge one. Where does he get this kill? Oh, so he gets the kill on the guy square here. So he actually gets the kill on Paco. So, you know, Paco thinks that he has his right side covered for him, so he can't die, but number six doesn't have, you know, top bed. He actually just has, you know, this close angle and ken can actually see Paco from this angle we get the first blood that's huge you know dante ends up trading for him but now we can just try and fly out unfortunately it doesn't go our way this guy's two piece three piece it's good first blood but uh you know it's still hard to break if you if you're trying to jump out like that and caesar just has you know has a jump out not really much you can do Now we're just getting blended. They, they pushed into garage, pushed up into the top three stairs. They start. Who is this? I like this route by Paco. Paco takes this route, knowing that they're going to be spawning bridge, takes the found route so that we have to still be keen on it while we're trying to break for, through Coop side. So, you know, number three. AG's looking for this, but he doesn't realize that Paco took the insane long route through Fountain instead of just going through middle. So they get those kills. Now we're spawning useless side. We're, end up, we're gonna end up getting, you know, this scrap time, which is fine going into the P4, but we would have really liked to have had a, a, a cleaner P3 break there. So again, overloading Coop. Overloading Coop on the P4, making sure that you have top three control, making sure you're also looking for these routes off of old spawns, trying to take routes through towards top third as well. See that? We get the Coop side control, but off of old, Brandon gets uh, caught with his, his back turns towards the enemy because they had spawned towards red side. And now we're spawning deep because of number six's influence and because you know we just got a kill there as well. Nice kill by Ant. He kills Kiz while he's throwing a trophy, but Paco with a two-piece. And this is it's just dangerous now. You see how easy it is if you're spawning, uh, you know, if you're spawning the enemies back back long. You get people top three, you watch over them. You can get people top balk too. You can have someone go towards top red. Watch anyone might be rotating towards P5. They can even make a play towards top plat kill you while you're trying to spawn up, maybe try and get dumb control. There's just so many ways for them to keep you keep you trapped and occupied. So that's why you never want you never want to be spawning here. This is like never. It was the worst shit if you were spawning there. That was I think one of the reasons why we were just Bad on uh, not control. Bad on Karachi in general for some of our some of the year on Hardpoint because we'd always have our P4s where we're spawning here. We wouldn't prioritize or or actually 
get like play this well we wouldn't play this side of the map well and we would always start spawning long or back alley you know this back area See, see, see what this, you know, allows because they get us, get us so pushed in into the spawn. I told you they can, you know, go top red and, and watch this, this route. But what, you know, Paco ends up doing here is he takes the even deeper route, goes bus stop, making sure that everything is covered for them. Uh, in case, you know, let's say he went top balcony and we had gone under long and, you know, went this way by going to the bus stop. He's cutting off everything. The only thing he's not covering off is if we, you know, jump off the hot ball and go all the way around like this. But, dude, no one is taking that route. If you take that route, that's insane. But he's now making sure that everything's covered. And AG just can't do anything. AG wants to make a, a route for P5. Paco's already here. And now we're trapped. And then he looks for the bottom found route, which is perfect. This is a great place by Paco. But what happens here is because they get these kills and they have no one playing safe, they get these kills and we end up spawning towards P5 anyways. So they get those last 20 seconds, but we get the P5 rotation, which is huge for us. So this is, I think they kind of trolled this a little bit. We're not watching a low coop. Number seven sneaks by. This is a huge sneak by by number seven. Who's K Kismet? We we shouldn't know that he's here. Can get the two piece. I think we're we're now counting for him. We shouldn't know he's here, but I think based on the information, someone must have called out that we're missing Kiz and that he could be in the back, which is a great call out. I don't know who it was. I I would have to go back in the comms and listen, but that's what Ant's doing here. You see Ant. He's looking our, in, in our back and making sure that we have our backside because we are counting. We know that we're missing Kiz, but because of what he does here, he gets a really good timing to get underneath our guy's coop. You see, Ken does the jump up towards top coop. Look at that timing. As soon as he jumps up, Ken's or Kismet's already going low coop, so no one has this. Let's see if we end up catching him out. This has been a long time since I watched this specific map. I like this play off Ken off uh, off old by Ken too. He gets a two piece off old. Realizes they're probably not going to hit around again this time. He goes short and tries to cut off anyone that might be going towards ticket from diner. And sees Kismet here. I think Kiz ends up getting a kill for this, but the fact that we see him and count for him, you know, Brandon almost turns on him. He gets a kill on Brandon, but you know, we get the initial trade right away. So this is good, and what uh, Ken's doing here is he bought a little bit of time so that while these guys were focused on Kent or while these guys were focused on his Kent, uh, Kiz, sorry, these other two guys are now you know kind of paranoid by by Ken because they were kind of expecting Kiz to get through and maybe open things up for them, but the fact that Ken opened things up on the other side for us was uh was really important. Dashy popped off here. Was it here? Here that he gets three? No, th that was the uh, that was the winner finals. Actually, that wasn't grand finals. But now we're we're soaking this time. This is a big P five soak. Look at this timing four and five get. Brandon's holding the left side from this back, you know, left parking lot area. Skies jumps out as soon as. I guess I guess Brandon's just looking to his left. He doesn't see him jump out. Skies leaves him alone because he's like, okay, he didn't see me. Let me just hit the back. But what do you know? AG is still looking towards his back. I'm not sure what, uh, you know, what AG sees or hears or his intuition to look behind him like this because he should know that, you know, Brandon has P3 and our back. But him doing that literally saves this hill. Because Brandon would would not have seen him, or Brandon didn't see him, I should say. So AG shouldn't even been technically looking there, unless you know AG sa or Brandon said something like, you know, I, I don't have your mid for a second because he's going to go top three instead, and then maybe you'll go and look this way or go and watch middle like that. 
but AG's intuition to look behind him right away to get that kill on Caesar is, is huge. Maybe D uh, Dashi said he doesn't have any more while he was re repositioning. He must have. So regardless of what of it what it is, great calm if it if it is that way. Otherwise, great intuition to still pick it up, just in case. But huge huge plays regardless. Huge P P five hold. Still soaking. Now we're moving on towards P1. Again, they're already making waves towards P1. You know, Paco's already top three. Again, top three control, huge on the P1s, making sure that you have the high ground going into this hill. That's what Kids is doing here. He refills it when pa once Paco dies. This is a good place. Paco playing an offie, so anyone that's off of old, he can see trying to either hit through low. That's why he's playing, like, looking up the stairs, if they're going to hit through low and then hit top. Or if they hit through top like this, he's still going to be able to cut them off that way. Number five, watching through uh, middle. Number six, watching the deep pinch in case this guy off old went low to short, which is good. And number seven is, is Coop, and he's watching top third and... I guess taking timings through uh, low coop as well. So good setup, but number two wins the gunfight number five in time. So that causes Paco to have to shift. Since Paco has to shift, he takes the tension off of uh, top fire. Actually, Ant wins the one on Paco as well. So fucking huge plays my Ant. How does he even win this? He just runs up middle. Oh... Caesar gives it up at the wrong time. Look at that timing. Chat, look at this. He gives it up at the exact wrong time to look top third because he's getting the call out from Kismet, who's saying one guy top third. Oh, Kismet, one, one guy top third. Caesar looks for it. Meanwhile, Ant is already hitting towards P1. Ant gets the kill on P1. Again, Paco needs to readjust, but Ant just finesses the middle of P1. Huge, huge break. I told you that that setup was actually pretty good, but the way that we actually broke it with taking attention off of other people and, and forcing people to shift was fucking elite. I didn't I don't even remember watching that back, but watching that right now is is really big. That's a huge uh, guys. I told this or I, I said this in the other Karachi hardpoint, but the, the P1, this, that second P1 is so massive because it's an easy hold if you don't have, you know, the, the end of P5. It's easy hold. Like, I, I showed you what their setup was. That's, that's a very easy hold. And then you can end up chaining it with the P2, and that's it's so, so big. AG gets a cruise off of that, too, when he, once he gets the kill on, on Dante, I'm pretty sure. They have to use the streak on that, too. So they use their streak, but we still get the kills. So the streak is for nothing, basically. We've wasted their streak. We're still going to have 25 on this because we played the trades well. Look at, look at what happens here. AG gets pushed out. Paco has to kill him. That's fine. Dante kills Ken, top third. Great. But Ant pushes off. He ends up getting ki a kill towards... Uh, is this secret? Yeah, Ant pushes up into Secret to hide himself from the cruise missile, kills Kismet, gets back on point, and then he just teams work, team works with, uh, with Brandon. Great job. And then since, obviously, you know, Dante was the one streaking, he's out of the play, so he's a little bit late. So there's no, like, real trade for him right there. All right, let's, uh, let's listen to the, the listening while we're, while we're doing this. Last guy short on you, Brandon. It's not a mid-cut. This guy, we know he's either going to be hitting P1 from mid-cut or jumping up top scaff. One of the others. Could be AC. He's AC. Brandon knows this. Ken kills him. One shot top plat. We know this guy's top plat. Ants already made it through towards Ticket. 
Ken's going to say, I'm going to kill the guy Platt because he knows he can take this timing through the balcony to go and flank them. So now he's the one pinching for our team, trying to make some noise on this side of the map to open things up for Ann on the front side. He's calling short. He realizes he got Dante weak. Dante's now pushed out. Unfortunately, Ant dies here. There's nothing he can really do. He was going to try and open things up even further, but Caesar's just completely looking at it. Take your time. Now, Ant, he sees two and new. He died for it. Now we just got to, we got to wait for each other and break together. There's no point going, you know, there's no point Ken running off and jumping out, trying to get a kill here and staggering and everyone just getting staggered. So we just got to just wait for each other now. Dante is kind of finessing here. So this is a good play by Dante. He was, he was top plat. He backed off once Ken, you know, went through dome, went through low short. Now he's to top fire. He kills, he kills Brandon off of old. Paco's now in ticket. So now not only do you have, so you have maximum two guys on time and you know there's two guys that have already pushed towards ticket and towards top fire. So this is, this is like honestly really bad for us because we need to basically clear these two guys before we clear here, unless they're not watching anything. If they're not watching anything and Ken can somehow finesse his way and go and kill number five without seven, you know, seeing him or, or trading him right away and open things up for these three guys coming off spawn and number eight has to either go back and, and help out or number six has to go back and help out. That's like pretty much the only way we can try and break this. He sees two hill. So Ken tries, but Caesar just reads him out. Again, it's just, it's so important that's, that Dante had stayed alive there and then he gets that kill on, on Brandon while he's top fire. And then obviously that once they have some positioning, Paco also pushes up into ticket. It's, it's just so, it's very hard to break. So we get the first guy, Dante. Pa Paco's still ticket, you hear that from Ken. AG gets another kill. So again, once we get those two kills, we spawn close. Now is our chance to actually fully break and possibly, uh, you know, chain it into the P3. If we can keep the spawn, we can pick up the right, or sorry, the left. And we'll be good. So these, these are good, great, like, breaks for the, or sorry, great comms for the break. Because you've got those two kills, AG gets the, the kills. Now you just got to make sure that Anyone playing credits, either the yellow car, the curve, inside the bus, you know, if someone had pushed into ticket during this timing that, you know, Paco died here and refilled it, there's, there's a lot of things that you still have to clear. So as a group of four, you still need to be calming as fast as possible what you're clearing and, ha and how you can get to the hill as fast as possible. We're, we're, we're calling everything. We're, we're expecting them to have pushed up into like bus or to curve, but they've actually just sat in, in hill and sat towards, you know, their back L, kind of playing a little bit safer. So we have all the space to work with front. All right, so there was a chance, like there was a chance. We still made it a little mixy, but I think if Ant stays alive here, like he gets this kill. If he can stay alive just for a little bit more, there's nothing really he can do though. He's so weak. Uh, but it, like, let's say if number, you know, number four, Brandon was able to get his, you know, cross or something. It's, it's just hard because he, he can die in this little corner. So he dies. We can't really trade him out because they're just hopping behind, you know, the back L. Brandon can't really get a kill. Maybe if he gets a kill here, we win it. If actually, if he gets one of these kills, 100%, we win it because Ken's still here to work, to work with. But I like how we how we how we broke or we how we were trying to break. Or like if Brand if if not not a Brandon, but if Ant gets that kill while he's finessing towards this this side wall. There's so, there were so many opportunities. Just the, the bad guys back out. Regardless, whatever. 
We made it a little mixy. Regardless, we're still spawning for P3. Good for P3. So our job, pick up the left. AG here, he, he goes top three. He's going to pick up the left. This guy jumps up Scaff. He, he sees him or hears him, whatever. He gets Kismet rotating early. AG, get someone get my mid. He has all of left. You see how he's playing this? He has all of the left. The only thing he really doesn't have is if, uh, you know, they come up top fountain and, and see him right away and he doesn't snap on him right away. If someone has his mid, he knows that he can't get some type of weird timing where they go underneath him under this mid cut. So that's why he wants someone to get his mid because first off, he, he doesn't have that little, you know, route, but also he doesn't have mid in general. So they can just run up mid, you know? So that's what he's calling out here. Ken has mid from Hill. Brandon has the right side. And can also watch mid as well. And AG has the left side. AG, or sorry, Brandon, uh, Jesus. Ant realizes he doesn't see anything left. AG doesn't see anything left. They don't see anything middle. So now Ant is in that flex position where he's like, I, I can just help Brandon out towards the right side because we don't see anything you know, left at this moment, we don't see anything mid. Let me go out right. But as soon as he's trying to do that, Ken sees that they're coming out middle. So he sees two middle. AG can react off of this as well. Gets one. Unfortunately, dies top three, which is a pretty important position to die. But he needed to react off that too. He still spawns decent. He spawns behind them top three. So they're going to have to look for it, the spawn. But he needs everyone else to stay alive as long as possible so he can make a play on these guys paco spawn killing him but by him spawn killing ag he doesn't he can't help out on the break so number five dies on this break and you know brandon dies to the right side so it's not great but at least we can hold a little bit of time and finesse for a little bit longer because paco is so far out now they spawn him behind a red again stay alive as long as possible Number six, number seven. If, if number two, you know, Ant can hold them off for a little bit, these guys are coming off towards the backside from spawn and can hold that side. Gets one kill on, on uh, who is it? Dante dies to Kiz. Huge kill by Ken. He gets a two piece actually. He gets the first one on, on Paco here. Knows he's backdoor. Great kill on, on Kiz. We're not getting time, but if, if he dies there, they're soaking time and it's, it's, it's much different. And now we're getting time. I think they end up breaking anyway. Maybe not. We're still making this super, super mixy for what it like, could have been. You see us all still flooding this old time. Number two from here. But we realize they have three here now, so we don't have to technically take those routes. Number four, Brennan is still going to take the routes, but they're also starting to like overload and heavy play it. And is huge here. Again, what do you not want to be doing? Spawning back alley. We're spawning back alley. They have top third. Fountain basically on hill. He is in this one position where he can possibly make a play and, and make some chaos here. Kills Dante, gets away with his life. Now they have to be looking for him. You see, look, look at all three arrows. All three arrows turn. Because he gets, he gets that opening, he gets the kill. Yeah, Chance calls it out. Good, good call by Chance. But he is an activate and actually show himself and they just take the timing and be like fuck it you know if he hits it he hits it we're just going to focus these guys on time and that's what they do they that's honestly not like not a bad play they just focus like i'm a guy on time because they realize you know Ant's going to be finessing somewhere around coop let's just hope that he doesn't you know turn for us and get a, a two-piece in our wall where we have our back turns toward turns toward him still now he's still again 
on the flank, so they know he's here, but that doesn't make him easy to deal with. But while Shotzi's been behind him, Subhunters have at least bullied the rest of Optic out of time. We got about 10, 15 seconds out of this hard point. Not They're still looking for him now. So now it opens up for number three and number one to get back onto the scrap time. Number four is going to try and, I guess, take a, a route for, for new. You, can, you should consider doing these breakdowns with the comms in the video. It'd be lip to watch. I don't know how much I, comms I want to give away, though, but I, I do like the idea. I want to see what the, the medium is like. like I, I want to do maybe some S&D ones where it's like we, we talk about our comms and S&D, but like a full, full hardpoint comms. I can do it, but I, I would have to, I feel like I'd have to get permission from the players in case they said some rogue shit, you know? We'll see. That's not a bad idea, though. For the most part, I think it would be fine, though. Brandon tries getting the, the, the route towards P5, dies for it, unfortunately. We're on scrap time. We need to make a break on this P5. We still have AG's cruise missile. But they don't get a ton of time off of it. Still about a 10 He's gonna use the cruise missile now. This this is great, great usage. Number seven, Kismet. He can't stay alive on hill, so he pushes forward. Ants there to get the kill. Other guys have to wrap back, or else they die from the streak. I think number one should get this kill on number eight. Or at least he sees him. Regardless, AG gets the kill on number eight with the cruise. So now all of these guys have backed up to P3. We can now hold from the front. Huge, huge cruise missile there. Huge, I mean, massive two piece by Dante. Dante looks, you know, top bed and low bed, gets a two piece for it. Does open things up for Ken though. You know, you only had two people that were left alive. Ken takes the, the mid route. Gets two piece. So Dante gets a save two piece, but Ken bails us out with a two piece of his own because, you know, we just had more people up based on the, that cruise missile information and how we use the cruise. Now he pushes into P3, makes it even more chaotic. Regardless, he did his job getting the two piece and backed him down a little bit to make him look for him P3. AG's on hill. He's holding from the front. Two, massive two piece by AG. He's all he needs to do is stay alive and buy time. He's he gets two kills for it too. You know he could have went barrels and just played his life, but he he gets the kills while he's like finessing this little hill heady. I talked about this before already, but this is uh going towards that other video. Regardless, you know Dante's gonna take this mid route. This is a good play by Ken for picking up the possible mid route. Dante just wins the gunfight. That's a huge gunfight win by Dante. Good, good job. I mean, Ken's looking for it, but Dante reads it himself, and now he can flank uh, top bed. Caesar's, Caesar's refilling. He gets a kill on uh, Brandon trying to refill the, the hill. They also, they also get a nade kill on AG because we don't have a trophy. So that's, that's still a good, like, 30 for them, though. We made it mixy. I, I liked how we played it for the most part. That, that kill on, on Ken towards short was this huge, and, and also, you know, them just being able to reinforce and, and get the kill, especially with the nade, too, was massive. Ken was throwing a stunt. Oh, is that what it was? Oh, he did throw a stun. He ends up getting his gun up, too, but he, he did throw a stun. You're right. So they get old P5, which isn't great for us, but we're making our way towards the right side of the map. We're going to try and get this top third. This is a huge kill by Paco on, on Brandon, though, to get pushed up through, through fire and through short. Now they have opportunities to go through and, and finesse through our fountain. It's big for us to look for this. AG gets the top AC. Again, Dante is all, all, already pushed up to, to Diner as well. So these guys are going to be a really big nuisance for us right now. We do get the kill on the Coop guy, which is great. 
but now they can break here they can break here so having to watch both of these sides is not the best so we have to kind of just play tight around here and make sure you know if we do get a gun hill they have to watch like their own like short basic or their own top fire basically the guy if we're watching fountain correctly should watch short for the power positions, Kenny opening up the street. Fred has secured top third, but Hydra has him in his sights. Oh, first set, five points, Big kill by Ken. This is where he starts to really, really heat up. That's a massive kill. He also knows that Paco is on this side of the map too. He knows that there's at least multiple people, so that's why he throws the trophy. Ant, or sorry, AG is watching the low coop. He sees Kismet over here. Ken gets this kill. Massive kill. We're on time now. AG gets the kill on the Kupkai. Now we're holding. Once again, AG is going to have our top third. We have our mid. Number two and number one are going to are going to still help towards the side in case anyone uh, st like refilled fire or refilled uh, ticket side. He's still holding this for Caesar too. I don't know how he doesn't die to Caesar, but st still holding it regardless. Opens this up for for Ant to get the kill on Caesar. Now Ant's top. You know, ticket himself, or sorry, top fire himself, and he can finesse. They finally kill AG on the right side, but Ken's gonna pick this up, going top three himself. Gets the kill on, on Kiz, huge kill. He also knows that another guy was over there with Paco. He's looking for Paco. He has no idea where he could be. Tries to cut out every scenario or possible, and he's actually underneath the scaff. Get the kill there. Soaking now again. I told you this P1 could be really a big soak if you can get the initial Initial kills initial wave AG refills top third while Ken goes towards the right side They kill AG going top third though, but you know Ken is still on the right side here. He's on a five streak He's trying to play for a streak. You just make sure that you're a hard clear at least get one Gets kill on kismet he gets streaks almost almost kills Caesar too, but he gets traded out regardless. Now we know where the last guy alive is. Last guy alive is going to get top AC or mid cut. He goes at top AC. Still soaking, by the way. Get the kill on, on Dante. Huge kill on Dante as soon as everyone else is trying to break from like the AC side for them. So we're still soaking this old. Ken uses a streak, but you know he just gets the streak for info on where they're at and to see if they can stunt that initial p2 push and that helps us out with you know how they're actually trying to break because he he tells them you know they're coming ac coming mid cut whatever and he knows the last guy alive is going to be dome side so they all end up spawning coop i talked about this in the video but it's just a it's just a squad spawn thing look at these squad spawns they squad spawn coop it fucks them over for the p2 because now with the P2, it's kind of like a, you know, a B control break. If you're spawning here, it's just such a longer time to actually have to break. And we know that one guy is flanking the backside. You know, you, you heard the comms in the other video. Ken's calling this out for days that someone's going to be flanking somewhere on their backside. He sees Paco, he knows he's the flanker. Once he gets that kill, I'm like, okay, that's just massive. Last guy alive, Kismet, he tries to jump front. Brandon picks it up. We should just went off of that. Team Nate goes in, last guy alive, goes to the black door. We teamwork him. Huge map one. Ken again, completely went off, bandana Kenny. As soon as this guy goes back door, we just slide on him. There's just no shot. Great jobs. Honestly, I think this specific map came down to those P1s. Those P1s were so big. Uh, you know, the first P1 where we had the good break off. The second P1 where we broke it basically, you know, I don't, I don't know if it was instantly, but the break itself was so massive. And then that last hold was really, really good. So I would say that those were the difference makers for that map.